I grew up in foster care and I had three different placements before I graduated high school. I don't really understand the reason why I was put in foster care in the first place. It was never really explained to me, except that my mom was a single mom and couldn't take care of me because she couldn't find anybody to take care of me when she was working. And after struggling for a couple of years, she decided it was best for me to go into foster care so that I could be adopted by somebody who, you know, was better off than me and her. But somehow that never happened. I don't really understand why it didn't happen. I did have a couple of visits when I was really little, and then I got switched to a different foster family in a group home because when I went into high school, I had I had, didn't have very many friends. I didn't like being um, in what my friends coming to my house because it was always so busy. There were other kids and there were strangers coming and going and you know visiting the other kids. I didn't I didn't really I didn't like the idea of people seeing that. I wanted to keep the me that was in school and the couple of people I knew, I didn't want them knowing all of that stuff was going on in my home where I lived. And my foster parents never questioned it. They just, you know, were so busy with everybody, all the kids, all the doctor appointments, all the social worker business, all that stuff. They just, they just kind of never said anything about it. So I had a few friends in school, but I was always the new kid. Three times I changed. By the time I was in high school, I was the new kid again. So nobody, I never really got close to anybody. And it was kind of okay with me. I didn't mind being by myself because I could, you know, lose myself in a book and not even notice that I had spent three or four hours by myself after school and not with friends, like other people did. But I, I don't know, I just didn't question it. And it was getting close to when I was going to graduate, and I didn't really know what that, what my future would be because I knew that I would not be in a foster care home after graduation, but I didn't know, you know, kind of what that meant. And my social worker wasn't that helpful. She said, oh, don't worry about it. You'll go to community college, it'll be fine, you'll get a job, you'll get, you know, a Pell Grant, and it, you'll be okay, and we'll cross those bridges when we come to it. Well, by my sophomore year, when everybody else was taking SATs, somehow nobody ever, like, sat me down and said, here's what SATs are for. You don't have to be, your parents don't have to be paying for college for you to take these classes. You might get scholarships or whatever. And I didn't even know what I wanted to do when I grew up. So the whole situation just kind of stayed in the background. And when it got closer to the end of my junior year, I had met a guy that I liked. And I liked hanging around with him. You know, he was a gamer. And so he had a lot of friends over at his house. And we used to go in the basement and game, but I wasn't that big of a gamer. I, there were other things I was interested in, so I don't know. It was kind of weird, but it was a place for me to go and a place for me to hang out and whatever. Well, by the time senior year rolled around, a few months before graduation, I was getting real nervous about what was going to happen after graduation, and gamer guy asked me to marry him someday. And I said yes. But someday to me was right around graduation. I don't think it was the gamer guy. I, I think he thought somewhere way down the line. But I 
I needed a place to be. I needed somewhere to feel safe and secure after graduation. So instead of going on a spring break trip with our friends, well, we kind of went on a trip with our friends. Actually, two of my girlfriends covered for the fact that we traveled sort of part way with them to their spring break, but we stopped off in a different state and got married. And my foster parents didn't know about it. His parents didn't know about it. So after graduation, we sort of sprung it on them that we had gotten married during spring break and that did not go over well. My foster parents said, well, you're graduated now and you're a married woman. You're out of the foster care program in a month or so. So good luck to you. We wish you well, but we can't take any further responsibility for you because you're not our foster daughter anymore. I guess I didn't think about that, and that was kind of a blow, and it kind of hurt my feelings, but looking back on it, I can understand why they felt that way. I deceived them. We deceived them. But I didn't know what else to do at the time. So we moved into Gamer Guy's parents' house, and we had two bedrooms. One was converted into a living room, sort of, so we could have some kind of privacy as a married couple. But it was just a bedroom-sized room, and we couldn't have very many people over. There were other children in Gamer Guy's family, and it was just awkward all the way around. By the time, by the time we had been married a few months, I had a job. We were both in school. He had a job in his family's business, and I was starting to trying to figure out how to pay for college because my little waitressing job wasn't doing it very well. Plus, we had bills to pay just like everybody else. We had to pay rent. We had to pay electricity and gas, part of it for the house. We had cell phones and the occasional night out at, you know, some fast food restaurant. But mostly we were just in school and working. So we didn't even see each other that much. And I started looking at how to pay for college, and I came across an internship in another state in a big resort town. And I thought, oh, you know, maybe I can make enough money down there for if I take two semesters off school, which was the limit they allowed, maybe I can make enough money to fund a whole year of college and not be in such a strain. And the first gamer guy thought that was a good idea. But then he realized he would have to leave, you know, his family's home and their business and his mom and dad weren't happy about it. And things started to go sideways. And we got in more and more arguments. And I really wanted to go because I had never been anywhere. I really thought this was a good opportunity for both of us. And in the end, eight, nine months into our marriage, Hamer guy filed for divorce. And I was looking at being homeless again with no place to go. So I went to my college financial advisor and I said, look, I, I want this internship. Can we, can we see if I can get in? And college financial advisor pulled some strings or talked to somebody. I don't know how it happened, but I got in. And the next thing I know, I was sitting on a bus in the city with a backpack and an extra bag with like my headphones and laptop and whatever, and I was arriving at a bus station, and that bus, long drive, really long drive, I slept on the bus overnight, but by the next morning, I was in a completely different city, in a completely different area of the country, and I had a job, and I went through the orientation and the training, I was placed in a shared house kind of situation, which is looking back at it always kind of messed up because you don't know if the other people are there, you know, to actually pay their bills and make money to go to school or whatever. You don't know why they're there. And there were a lot of foreign exchange students in that resort. They were only there for a semester or two, and they were gone. So there was constantly problems with rent, and I moved three times while trying to keep my 
myself together and earn enough money for at least a year in college without financial pressure. And my manager in that resort community saw that I would work hard and do a good job, and I got one promotion. And a few months later, maybe six months later, I was offered another promotion. And this was a promotion that was a day manager in one of their, you know, more fancy restaurants. And I thought, well, you know, it's a big promotion. It's it's a raise in salary, which was great, because I already had to replace one car and buy a second car, used car. Maybe this would be okay. So I learned the job. I went through the training. I transferred to this new responsibility of being a manager, and all of a sudden I was dealing with thousands, tens of thousands of dollars in my till every day and having to make sure that all the book work worked out, and, and I did a really good job. I stayed after my shift to make sure all the money was accounted for and all the receipts were organized and turned into my manager and all that stuff, and she said that you know, she was really proud of me for working so hard, but, you know, when I went home at night, I was a wreck, and I probably hung out with people who were less serious about their future than me, and had mommy and daddy to go home to, or their home country in some cases to go home to, so this was not as critical to them as it was for me, because I had nowhere to go if I didn't make it here. The pressure mounted and mounted and mounted, and finally I couldn't take it anymore, and I went to my manager and I said, I don't think this is for me. This is too much responsibility, and I'd, I'd like a, to transfer to a less stressful kind of position. And the manager, you know, deals with people all the time. We're all in our 20s, and we all, you know, had different challenges in life. Girls left because they got pregnant. Guys got arrested for DUIs, and all kinds of stuff happened. So they were used to hearing what I was saying, even though I didn't realize it. I thought I was really letting my manager down. But my manager said, it's fine. We'll transfer you to just a regular key holder position or a opener position, and you won't have as much responsibility. So I went to a third position while I was in that city. And I wasn't making as much money. I wasn't saving as much money because, you know, rent and utilities and irresponsible roommates. And I got left holding the bag again. And I had had a friend that had left or was getting ready to leave and go back to their home college and said, hey, if you're ever in my area of the country, call me, text me, we'll go have coffee, you know, I'll show you around town, whatever. And I thought, oh, gee, a new start again where nobody else knows me, and maybe it will be better there because it's not a big resort town. And So after another few months, I texted her and I said, does that offer still stand? And she said, yeah. And I said, well, I'm thinking about moving, so I want to see what a different part of the country is like. And she said, sure, no problem. Come on up. We'll, I'll show you around. Maybe you'll like it here. And maybe you can stay a few days and really see if there's something here that you're interested in. So I did. I put in my two-week notice. I packed my car, and I headed off to this new place, a new city, and my car broke down. And that uh, ate up a big chunk of my nest egg. But I got the car fixed, I got on the road, and uh, I showed up, and she was great, and she showed me around, and she even helped me get a job as a waitress, even though neither one of us, when I went there, planned on me staying. It was just sort of a, you know, see what the place is like trip, but I ended up staying. And then I met somebody at work, and he really liked me, and that was great. Long story short, we ended up getting married. So now I'm divorced once. I'm married a second time. Another gamer guy. 
And by then, I was also nearing the end of tech school. And I was going to do an internship and then go into an office situation as a technician in that field. And gamer guy wanted to go to school to learn to code gaming, which I guess pays really well, but it was really stressful on me to have to carry both of us at the end of graduation from my job, but somehow we did it. What you just heard is a composite story about one situation that happens in the foster care system where a child gets into their teenage years and they are getting ready to age out and they are not supported well enough by the people that are supposed to be there to help them. Social services, school counselors, to a certain extent foster parents. There's a variety of things that happen to these kids and they age out of the foster care system. Some of them go on and struggle and try and make a living for themselves, but others are not so lucky. Others end up homeless. And from homelessness, they are predated on by opportunistic people who can turn them out for any number of reasons, including drug trafficking, human trafficking, and all at the predator's financial gain. And it is in real reality a modern day tale of human slavery. That being said, this composite story taken from several different cases has a somewhat happy ending in that despite the fact that the girl was married and divorced and married again by the time she was in her mid twenties, she ended up with a good enough job to be the breadwinner for her home until her pregnancy complications forced her to stay home and be a stay at home mom. And the script flipped and the husband went out and was the breadwinner. If you're new here, welcome and thank you for watching this is the third in our series jane doe why people go missing and this series got interrupted about six weeks ago and now we're getting back to it because i've kind of cleared the decks of things that are distracting and am going to return to focusing on the projects that i have in motion and this is one of them you can find the Jane Doe series in the Jane Doe playlist. That's it for this show. Thank you for joining me. I hope that you learned something or you find the Jane Doe playlist interesting. Cafe's going to get loud and I'm out of here. God bless you. See you real soon.